Welcome to my channel, Fifi Creates. I'm Felicia. Let's create something together. So recently on my channel, we explored the DTF hack um, with the sublimation ink for cotton shirts, right? We tested to see if you had to cure your DTF print before you pressed it, or if you could get away with not curing it at all. We tested that and we had some interesting results. However, if you're not new to the DTF world, then you know that DTFs can be used for other items other than clothing. Some DTFs can be put onto hard substrates like mugs and acrylic. We want to test that theory today to see if the DTF hack works for those as well. So I got a couple of Dollar Tree mugs and a couple of acrylic blanks that we're going to test and see, does the DTF sublimation hack work for hard substrates as well? Now, I'm going to quickly say that there is no replacement for an actual DTF print or even better, a UV print, as they will stand the test of time a little longer than I think the sublimation hack will. Also, there's a little bit of a limitation with the DTF sublimation hack because there's no white backing to that ink. So if you put it on a clear mug or even a dark mug, those colors are going to be a bit transparent and may not show up in the way that you want it to. Versus an actual DTF print where it's got a white backing. So no matter what surface you put it on, those colors are still going to come through. So again, with that being said, let's test it anyway, right? Okay guys, so let me show you what we're going to be using um, just so you can get an idea of what we're testing today. So these two mugs I have here are from the Dollar Tree. So these are regular non-sublimation Dollar Tree mugs. I have some acrylic keychain blanks here. I do have the DTF transfer film. Off to the side, I also have DTF powder um, and fine. I'm going to be using my sublimation printer. I do have the Epson 4760 that's been converted with sublimation ink. Um, and to save time, I did go on ahead and already print and cure my DTF images. Again, using my sublimation printer, making this a DTF hack. So what we want to do is press these items and see what the durability is for the DTF hack for hard surfaces, right? So for things like an acrylic blank, these can easily be coated with like UV resin or something else of that nature to protect the image. The mugs, however, you can, but it's really not recommended. So I want to see just how well these do here. And again, as I stated before, we are going to have limitations when it comes to using the hack for this because we don't have a white backing on our DTF print. So our images are going to be see-through. So I did want to see what it's going to look like on the glass mug, but then I also have a white one here to see um, how that works out. Now for the acrylic, I know it's possible to sublimate onto these blanks, right? However, as I've been doing it, I can't necessarily get them to, to A, lay flat or stay as smooth as I like due to the high heat that I have to use for sublimation, right? So that's why it was important for this particular test since I am not going as high as 400 degrees or even 365, I am going to be fully curing my images and the sublimation ink before I press them. So off to the side, um, I have my tum, uh, excuse me, my mug press heating up to 300 degrees. Um, I'm going to be using uh, my, my mug press. That's my attachment for my heat press. Instead of my Cricut mug press, because of this angle here, I do have to use a different platen for this particular mug. Um, and I don't like putting glass 
in my Cricut Mug Press. Also, the Cricut Mug Press gets hot enough to sublimate images. And because of that, I can't control the temperature on my Cricut Mug Press. So that's why I'm gonna be using the attachment. So again, I have that heating up to 300. I will have to change out the platens as I'm using different things. Um, and if these acrylic blanks go well, I do have another project plan next week um, using a full acrylic sheet. Um, but we'll see how this goes first. So this is really just for testing it out, right? So I am gonna go ahead and prep these items. I'm going to take the images that I have printed out and cured, and I'm gonna use heat resistant tape to tape them onto my items, right? Um, and then we will come back when they are ready to go into the mug press, starting with this one, all right? Again, I'm going to just take my pre-cured image, put them onto the item and tape it um, just so that it doesn't move. And I'll show you what that looks like when we come back. Okay, so again, I do have my mug press attachment heat, you know, set up to my heat press, which is heated up to 300 degrees and I have it set for 30 seconds. Um, so what I'm going to do is I do have my mug here with my images taped on. I'm not gonna use um, any kind of butcher paper for this because this is not really gonna bleed through. So I'm just gonna leave it as it is. And we're gonna put this in again, I'm going to press it for 30 seconds. Now I realize this type of image, like that watercolor look is not really the best choice for the hack, but we're gonna try it anyway, just because I really like the image. Um, so I'm going to put this in here and close it up and we're going to press it for 30 seconds. Now when it comes out, I am going to put it off to the side because it does have to completely cool off before we can peel it. Um, and then at that point, we'll set up the next platen because the glass mug is not going to fit in that one because that one's... It's got a curve to it, so this will have to cool down, but we're gonna peel it first and see if it worked, just to see if we have to put it back in the mug press for longer. Okay, there's our 30 seconds. I'm gonna take this out. Okay, and I'm gonna put this to the side to completely cool and I'll come back and we'll see if it's ready to peel. Okay, so it's gotten cool enough where I can now handle it. So we're just going to test, uh, you know, a quick section to see if, and I can already tell that did not peel. So that just means that it's not hot enough to re-melt that glue. So we do wanna go ahead and increase our temperature and we're gonna try this again. Okay, so I have now increased the temperature to 360. And so we are going to try this again. another 30 seconds because we only want it in there long enough to melt the glue right so here it is so again we're gonna leave this to the side Ooh, this hot okay leave it to the side let it cool off because again DTFs are cold peels. Okay, so this is now cool to the touch. Let's see 
if it transferred. I have a feeling it probably didn't, but let's try it anyway. Let's try this side. Try to peel that without scratching the cup. There we go. Okay. And no, that it looks like it wants to transfer so bad. It's just, I don't know if I didn't put enough glue. Whatever I did. But it did not. It's just not. You can tell parts of it did. But I'm going to call that a fail. Because look, it's peeling right off. Even if I do do the second press, I think this is just not going to work out. See? So if that side is like that, let's see what the other side is. Now, I've seen this done but I'm wondering if it takes a different type of different type of DTF powder, or maybe if this is one of those situations that probably need to be like kind of double coated with the DTF powder. But again, this is another one it did not come out right. So that wants to peel right off. But for the parts that are stuck, that's stuck. Just for the heck of it, I wanna see what happens if I do uh, the double press and see what happens to that one little leaf that made it. So this time I am gonna Wrap it in butcher, put it back in here. And we're only gonna press this for say another 10 seconds or so. That's disappointing though. I wonder, I wonder if that just wasn't enough powder or if that needed to be double coated in powder. I did go ahead and press that a second time, but yeah, that would not be very secure. That's peeling right off. Okay, so Dollar Tree mug, I'm going to say, was not great with this hack. I'm going to go back, do some more research before um, I set up the next one because I have seen it work. It just doesn't seem to be this mug that works on. Or it could also be my powder. Let me let me check out some stuff and read up on some stuff and then I'll be back. All right, so for this next one, we did go on ahead. I re-cured it and put a second coat of the DTF powder on here. So hopefully this one works out. I did lower the temperature back to 330 to see if that is going to work out here. And let's see if that works out. I'm trying to see if I can't look inside and see if, if it looks melted or not.
it looks like it's melted but the image definitely isn't as clear as it was I can see parts of my little cup there did not fully melt. So I'm going to put this in for another 20 seconds. Again, we're gonna let this one completely sit off to the side and cool off and see how that worked out. Okay, so this is now soft or excuse me, cold, cool to the touch. So let's see what we have. I can already tell this is not working out. See, it does not want to come off of the sheet. So as well as the hack works. Oh, we got a dot. <laughs> the hack works for cotton. I'm going to say this is a no for hard surfaces. Only because even then it seems like it won't stay long anyway. Even if you did get it to stay down. It's, not, it's peeling right off. So I'm going to say that this hack is a no for hard substrates. Again, it's still a plus in my book for cotton, but hard substrates, we're going to leave this alone. All right, guys, again, so I'm going to call this one. I'm going to say that this is not worth exploring too much further, especially with the access that we have these days to DTF and even UV prints through like Etsy or other online retailers. So I'm going to say that this hack does not work for hard substrates. I'm not even going to attempt again with the acrylic blanks. I just don't think it's worth it to even try at this point. I'm wasting my effort and electricity. <laughs> um, but this just was a fail. It just did not work out. So unfortunately, as much as I wish this worked, it did not. So again, let me know in the comment section below because I'm sure there are plenty of people who have had success with this. I unfortunately am not one of those people. Let me know how you did it. So, because we tried it the original way. We even tried double curing it. It just does not want to stick because even whatever did stick is peeling right up. So, even if it did stick, I don't think it's going to be durable enough. See? Durable enough to withstand anything. It'll be there just clearly for show. And even then it wouldn't even have the same professional look like a DTF print or a UV print would. So this guys just didn't work for me. Sorry. Bye guys. Okay. I lied. <laughs> so I tested the acrylic and you can see the pressure from the plate pressed down on the image so much and the glue that it kind of distorted the image a bit. Okay. Cause this was regular heart and this was like a wood kind of toned image and it kind of blurred out and smushed the glue out the side. Now don't get me wrong. That is fused on there. It's not coming off. So it, Fused to the acrylic, but I'm still going to consider it a fail since the pressure from pressing it, which you still kind of need, caused the glue to come out and the, the image itself to distort. And these were cured prior too, so really shouldn't have moved too much, but it definitely did. You can also still see the acrylic took on the pattern of the DTF film. So this to me was just, just didn't work out, which is why I think there are very specific DTF films for hard substrates. Um, I do think they are a little different, I'm guessing. 
I'm not going to buy any to find out. But I tried it, guys. I did. I gave it a go. It didn't work. Again, bye. <laughs>